All right, hey, Shalom, Makyam. First and foremost, I'd give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakak Padash, the bonds to the apostles and elders, a great millstone. And we are the Hebrew Israelites, which consists of the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, Simul Indians, West Indians, and Haitians. And according to the Holy Scriptures, we're God chosen people. Shalom to all the beloved brethren out there, pushes knowledge and sincerity and truth. Shalom to the few sisters, and shalom to Israelite foreigners who were scattered abroad. And what you're looking at is a true depiction of the one that we call Jesus Christ, whose real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shai. What you're looking at is a true depiction of the one that we call God, one one that we call Jehovah, whose real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh. When you call upon the Most High and His Son, you must say Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh means He to be, or He is. Bahashim means in the name. And Yahweh Shai means he delivers. Our Lord and Savior has come back to deliver the elect out of the nation of Israel upon the destruction of the modern day Babylon, aka America. Once say Brakat the Yahweh, Brakat the Yahweh Shai, Brakat the Yahweh, Brakat the Yahweh Shai. The water Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai for another blessed day. The water Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai for this inspiration, the Holy Spirit. The water Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai for the apostles and elders and all you beloved brethren. That's fighting this good fight in faith. So this, this lesson is going to be based upon the Israelite foreigners indeed. I uh, ran to this information online, man. The spirit, the Urim and the Thummim. You understand what I'm saying? The Kfang Jews, a Jewish community in Kfang, China. <laughs> I say it like that, China. So that's the the um the disperse of the nation of Israel for my first exile during the Assyrian captivity. The bulk, well, you know what? I'm gonna pull it up for you. That's how these things came to be. It says the Jewish diaspora, right? It says is the dispersion of the Israelites or Jews out of the ancient ancestral homeland. The land of Israel and their subsequent settlement in other parts of the globe. All right. In terms of the Hebrew Bible, the term exile denotes the faith of the Israelites who were taken into exile from the kingdom of Israel during the 8th century BCE and the Judites from the kingdom of Judah who were exiled or who were taken to exile. During the 6th century BCE, while in exile, the, Judah, the Judites became known as Jews. Mordecai the Jew from the book of Esther being the first biblical mention of the term. All right. It says uh, the first exile was the Assyrian exile, our northern brothers and sisters, the Spanish speaking tribes and the native tribes, the Seminole tribes. This is this is the first time. Um, the kingdom got pretty much put into captivity starting in the north because the kingdom had split from the north and the south um, after the death of King Solomon. It started with King Solomon. These Everything we're saying is based upon secular history and prophecy. Prophecy is the focal uh, uh, premise of our ministry. Then we deal with the uh, secular history. We deal with the laws, the commandments. Proper names of the Heavenly Father, the mystery of the Gentiles. You have the natural Gentiles, who are the other nations, and you have Gentiles of the Israelite nations who have been scattered, who have been exiled into these different lands. All right. It says the first exile was the Assyrian exile, the expulsion from the kingdom of Israel, Samaria, begun by Telech, Teglath. Pelazar III of Assyria in 733 BC. You know, the time frame, you know, you ain't worried about that, but this is the time frame our people got put in exile. Says so the process was completed by Sargon II when the destruction of the kingdom in 722 BC, concluding a three year siege of Samaria by Shalmanazar V. The next experience of exile was the Babylonian captivity 
in which portions, um, I'm sorry, in which portions of the population of the kingdom of Judah was deported in 597 BCE and again in 586 BCE by Neo Babylonian Empire under the rule of Nebuchadnezzar II. So, Salakia, about the time frame, the time frame is correct. I thought it was going to say that's when they got taken down. With, but yeah, the ultimate takedown was 722 uh, BCE. The war started with Teclef Pelazar, which he's in the Book of Kings somewhere. Ran into that name. We were going to the Book of Kings, doing the, uh, the wars between the North and the South. He was the first one that came up against the North. All right, so this is this is correct. So giving all praises to Yahweh Shimei to the to the exiles, to the Israelite foreigners who have been scattered. So you have the K Fang Jews. All right, so let's go into the scriptures real quick. I'm gonna start off at uh, Isaiah 11. It says in 10. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for the ensign of the people, and to it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. These Gentiles are those Israelite foreigners, the exiles, who are living in different parts of the world. Okay? You have Israelites who are going to be looking like they're from China, Chinese. You know, have Israelites looking like Japanese. You have Israelites looking like Arabs, you have Israelites looking like the real Africans, you have Israelites looking like Esau, so-called white people, so on and so forth. Okay, these Gentiles are dealing with the Israelite foreigners, only ones that can receive this light. This this understanding goes back to our forefather Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob is the progenitor of the twelve tribes. All right. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left in, shall be left from Assyria. You have certain Israelites that stayed back, that escaped, came back to Jerusalem. I forgot the name of the king and kept the Passover with us, the south. So certain northern brothers and sisters are still in the Middle East. And from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush. Cush are the Ethiopians. So you have Israelites in Ethiopia. Not the Falashas. You have Israelites from Eritrea. If I'm saying it right. And from Elam. Those are the East Indians. The black untouchables. You have this one... <laughs> One video we ran into to do was throwing up the blue flag, saying I'm a black nigga. <laughs> look, <laughs> Salaki, that's what that video is real. He, he look, uh, he might be Jack. <laughs> yes, that video was real. It's a guy in India rapping, and in his rap song, he threw up. The, he had the blue flag saying he's a black nigga. So moving on, and from Shinar and from Hamath. From the Isles of the Sea. So this is all the, the scattering, man. The exiles. He shall set up an ends. An ends I'm sorry. He shall set up an ensign for the nations. And shall assemble the outcasts. Those are the Gentiles of Israel. And together, the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. So these Gentiles... To it shall the Gentiles seek are the outcasts. It's right there. Of Israel. So let's get into it. The Kafang Jews. Alright. Are the members of a small community. Descendants of Chinese Jews. Kafang. In the Henan province of China. In the early centuries of their settlement. They may have numbered around 2,500 people. Despite their isolation from the rest of the Jewish diaspora. All right. Just look that up. So another another diaspora was 70 AD as well. Okay. So we got scattered 
the Assyrian Empire to where our northern brothers and sisters got taken down, ultimately 722 BC, got put into captivity and our people, I'm sorry, yeah, right there, right there where I read earlier in the Wikipedia, yeah, around 722 BC, and also they came over here uh, to the Americas, North, Central, and South America, the Caribbean Islands, around 724 BC, okay? And they dwelt over here, but you have a good amount that stayed behind, that had escaped, okay? That is still out there as well in these regions, in China, in, um, in um, you call it the Arab world, India. The bulk of it, you can say that's Judah, okay? The dispersed of Judah. So the Jewish diaspora or exile is the dispersion of the Israelites or Jews out of the ancient, ancient ancestral homeland and their subsequent settlement in other parts of the globe. You can't get around that, man. It says their ancestors managed to preserve Jewish traditions and customs for several centuries, but it's not Jewish. Should, should be our Israelite traditions. All right? So the cave fang Jews, all right? You can finish that article on your own. I want to show you something else. Where is my Google at? Here it is. The cave fang Jews, that's all on Wikipedia. You have a, a, a cave fang stone. A cave fang stone. Get up out of here because it's a lot of information out there, man. All right. The cave fang stone inscription. What do you see, man? The Assyrian Hebrew. Because the first... Exile started with the Assyrians. Okay? Because we, we had the uh we had the Paleo um dialect as well. I'm sorry, not the dialect, the Paleo writings, the ancient writings. So after that, you have the Assyrian writings. Okay. So we go to that to that stone I pulled up earlier. Hold on. Hold on for a second. Right. <clears throat> so that information is out there. So when you go into this, this under the Song Dynasty, stone encryption. All right. So you got it in the Chinese characters. You look up at some of the Chinese characters. It wasn't this one. It looked like the uh, it looked a little bit like the Assyrian. Might be mistaken. Was it this one? Yeah, I think so. Now, nah. please forgive me. All right. So you go down to the English translation, and I was reading through some of it, it's summarizing. But the best part is at the last translation, and it says, it "says from creation down to Patrick Adam, handed them." on to Noah. Noah handed them on to Abraham. Yo, man. There's <laughs> no way around this. Dealing with the scriptures, our traditions. It says, I'm going to go back to the to the second to the last one. It says, truly such are the scriptures in their application of the way, the Tao, in regard to daily usage and common practices. <laughs> So jumping down, it says, as to the modeling of the statues and figures and the paintings and forms and colors, they are vain matters and empty practices made to startle and dazzle the ears and eyes, which is a depraved theory and certainly not worthy of consideration. But do those, but do those who venerate the scriptures know whence they Come, the scriptures of the way in their transmission had a, so we go jump down to the last, had a beginning from creation down to Patrick Adam, handed them on to Noah, and Noah handed them on to Abraham. Abraham 
handed them on to Isaac. And Isaac handed them on to Jacob. And Jacob handed them on to the 12 tribes. The 12 tribes handed on to Moses. And Moses handed on to Aaron. Our lineage. Joshua, Ezra. The religion of the patriarchs shone with renewed brilliance. It says, from this time, the religion of the patriarchs shone with renewed br brilliance. What's our religion, man? What's our worship? You know, we are those people. You have the scattered Israelites as well are living in the land of China. So you got, you go to um, Isaiah 49. Start at verse six. Man, start at verse five, and and it says, "And now say the Lord that formed me from the womb to be a servant." We have a beloved apostle Rama just did a video from from the womb to something else. I was meaning to check that out. So there's certain special spirits the Lord is dealing with directly through His whole only begotten Son and the angelic forces. To bring Jacob again to him, though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of Yahweh, and my God shall be my strength. Ooh, hoo, hoo. We are glorious in the eyes of the Heavenly Father. And he said, it is a life thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserve of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, the Israelite foreigners, that thou mayest be my that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. So some of you might question that. Well, let's go into the word Gentiles real quick and see what scriptures come up. Give you a better understanding. Once you get a proper understanding, this book is all about the Israelites, our history and prophecy the, 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 from the beginning to the, to the beginning of times, to the midst of times, to the end of times, the different empires that rule is in the Bible. The Israelites empires in the Bible are beginning to our destruction and our reconstruction. Once you get that in your mind and all, this, all, all the different captivities, our people got scattered. You're not going to get tripped up on these words. You, you'll have a proper understanding between the natural Gentiles and a proper understanding of the Israelite foreigners. Okay? The other Gentiles that the Bible speaks of. So it says right here, nation, people, na nation, people, usually, this way they try to throw you off, of non-Hebrew people. That's nonsense. This is the true understanding of that word, of descendants of Abraham, of Israel. How can we prove that? You can go into the precepts, right? Where it says, oh, let me find it real quick. Note, oh, no, no. Oh, let me pause it. Right. H1471 says noun, a masculine noun. And it says, and he goes, goes on to eight, specifically of the descendants of Abraham. Okay. The specifically. <laughs> specifically. Okay. And who, who the promise went to from Abraham? Because Abraham had another son, Ishmael. It went to Isaac. So that that so that stone, oh, me, me. right? Yeah, I have to turn off that Marco Polo brother just lighting it up right now. So from that stone, what it says, what the lineage how he got passed down is correct. Is a hundred percent. The patriarchs shown with renewed brilliance. All right, so we're getting up out of here, and you can link this up because when you link this this precept, you can link it up with Romans the fifteenth chapter. I was checking it out earlier. If it's in this 
context. Now, you can link those the Gentiles over Romans, the 15th chapter, because Paul uh, mentioned Isaiah in the Gentile situation in Romans, the 15th chapter. Okay. Matter of fact, I think I have it pulled up. Yeah, here it is. All right. Because he mentioned Isaiah. It says, uh, Romans 15, start at verse 8. Now I say that Yahweh Shai was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. So the circumcision are the Jews. All right. Those that was keeping the customs back then in the Roman Empire captivity. And that the Gentiles, all right, might glorify God for his mercy as it was written for this cause. I will confess to thee among the Gentiles and sing unto thy name. Okay. And again, he say it, rejoice he Gentiles with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all he Gentiles, and Lord him, all he people. And again, Isaiah said that there shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, and him shall the Gentiles trust. So who are these Gentiles? The Israelite foreigners from the scattering. Okay? Greek word. Ethnos it says a multitude, whether of men or beasts, associated with no and, 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 and. company troops swarm. And. Here it is a multitude of individuals of same nature or genus. Who is that? Same genealogy, the bloodline. Okay, the promises, tribe, nation, or people or group. You can say that. It goes off, it says, in the Old Testament, foreign nation not worshiping the true God, pagan, Gentiles. Nope. It says, Paul uses the term Gentile for Christians. Who are the real Christians? The Israelites are the real Christians. The anointed ones. That's what the word Christian means. The anointed ones. So that's plain, man. That is plain, giving all praise to Yahweh by Shemel Shai. But here's the, here's the point I got to get to. In um, what is it? Isaiah forty nine. We want to close out. All right, in the land of Sinim. All right, we'll go back to verse six. And he said, "Is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the preserve of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, the Israelite foreigners. This light." We go into the word light. Hebrew word is a war. Okay, Hebrew word is a war. Is illumination. All right. A light of instruction. Yahweh's as Israel light represents this knowledge. Okay, when you go down. So here it says, where is it? It says light for doctrine, teaching, a light of the Gentiles. This doctrine and teaching is also for the Israelite foreigners who have been scattered, not the other nations. Let us walk in the light of Yahweh, compared to Proverbs 6 and 23. For the commandment of God is like a luminary and the law is his light. Come on, man. Who the law is given unto? All right. So this is for the Israelite foreigners who are, who are you know, in the land of China, uh, uh, the Arab world, the Russian world, the, the uh, India, you know, the Isles of the Gentiles over there in, um, in Hawaii, you know, the scattered. That thou mayest be a sal my salvation unto the end of the earth. All right, so I'm jumping down to the mountains. Here it is. Here it is. Let's go to verse 10. 
verse 11, it says, I will make all my mountains a way and my highway shall be exalted. Behold, these shall come from far and loads these from the north and from the west and these from the land of Sinem. The land of Sinem. This information was brought to me, by the way, this particular scripture from beloved brother Kassad. Shalom to them brothers up there in um, in, um Washington State, man. And when you read this definition, woo! People living at the extremity of the known world may be identified with the inhabitants of southern China. Plain and simple. All right. The Kfang Jews. All right. Close out with our Baruch chapter four. It says, O Jerusalem. Look about thee toward the east, and behold the joy that cometh unto thee from God. Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away. They come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One, rejoice in the glory of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Shalom, Akiam, Lord, one is edifying, less unto the very elect. Shalom.